Hello everyone, Dylan here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to a Knight's Kingdom review. Well, build a figure construction wise, of course. And this one is on Sir Kentis and Karzon from 2006, of course. So we'll start off with the one canster entry that I have for this review, which is of Sir Kentis, of course. Now, you may notice that this canister is quite different than the first couple canisters. There's like, as you can see, see, of like different shaping, like without the castle shaping to it, of course, but, and if you notice of like, of how most Bonkle Hero Factory canisters were all like this solid plas hollow plastic, but this, but these ones of which are actually a hollow tin metal. Very interesting. Quite neat. Oh, it's so much different than like that, or it's like plastic bags of Hero Factory, of course. Just, but this is which kind of a sign of the times where you got some extra cool stuff, of course. But as for itself, you see picture of Sir Kentis in striking position, and his name's right there, like a logo, 43 pieces. And also on one side of which had the Lego Knights Kingdom logos and also set number 8703, uh, 6-12. And on the back of which, which has a chain mail kind of theme to it. See another picture of Sir Kentis and the two features of him, lego.com. And add for the other figures in the wave, which I am also reviewing. And also the trademark and warnings. Underneath the which is just this barcode and the trademarks, of course, where the components are made, and the top part of which, oh, which is quite cool on how it has like this little logo etched onto it, and also the things around it, and hollow space of it, just like so. So, oh, which is quite a lot different than most casters we're used to knowing. And how you like how it was sealed if you bought this brand new somewhere or back in the day is it just had some like plastic taping kind of sealed to it too, of course and uh, what else but still quite interesting I think at this time and yeah and that's it with Gamster okay, now on to the instruction manuals which see sort of the same picture that was on the front on the canister, but at least with a couple of little pictures on the side, or comic strip pictures on the sides of them. But interesting thing is piece list, parts list, which is at the front of the manual instead of in the back part. And as you see, they're like 3D CGI kind of rendered for that instead of like drawing type rendering. Kind of interesting. But anyways, on the back of which you see how to win on the online survey. And also it's the last building steps and also the features and how to put them back in the canister. And then add for all the figures of this way, which I am also reviewing. And add for some of the system set, minifig sets that there were at the time. And also this time, it's comic strip as well. If you want to look through all this, pause the video. Or maybe I just go like this, yeah. Well, same matter of fact, it's but a different comic to it. So now, on to the sets. First up is Sir Kentis, which, as you can see, well, with the two good knights of this wave, at least, it was quite a bit different. 
well, sort of the same as the first couple years, but, and also like the second year, which does have a similar body piece, but a little later on that. Let me zoom in a bit. Whereas for the legs of which, all of which, all the pieces the same as the previous year's one, but as for the armor bits of which, which do tap, which attach on regular studs, it's rather than on like pinholes, which the, they did in the previous year, but although you can actually let it attach to, uh, to regular pins and whatnot if you want, which is still workable there. And of course, some minifig sets did use that to make it work. And as you see, it does have dark tan for the leg bits, of course. And, uh, and of course, same exact leg armoring as in the previous year's ones. That's of course. But as for the body piece, still one big solid piece, of course. And also, like the first year's ones, has studs on it, but instead it's four rather than eight, and also you don't attach any di little things onto it like in the first year, and, but at least it's still kind of workable or mockable, of course. But and of course it does have some nice uh, sculpting of chainmail around it, of course. And as for the arms of which is without this armoring that is kind of like the second year's ones, but, well, kind of like that, but a little more bulky, yeah, of course, and, and of course these you can definitely use on plenty of box as well, of course. And as for the arm itself, which is just about the same as all the other figures in the line, and also it still has the technic hole there, even if even though the shield bit from the first year not present, of course. And for his weapon in particular, which is actually a mace made from a technic rod and a couple of ones. And also the spiky bits which later used on Toamari Huki and Stranius in Bionicle. Which, so this was the first time we got to see these until well, those couple years of that. But still, at least they still quite cool for mocking and everything, of course. And as for the other arm, which does have the shield, that, which has some nice de detailing on it, like with the unicorn, armored unicorn on it, of course, and also four studs on it, quite interesting. <coughs> Sorry about that. And so now on to uh, the head. Whereas for the mask, which I see, just about similar to the previous ones, but instead it does look quite knight like, like with the venting and whatnot. And also, interesting thing is that there's a plus hole on there so you can attach different things onto it. So that of which quite different than the previous year's ones, but since these of which were also used in the minifig sets this time year, of course. And if I flip this up, and as you see, his face print of which uh, quite interesting and still has that yellow skin tone to it. And also, as you can see, that doesn't cover the hat all the way, of course, unlike with the previous one. So, I, so it's kind of like they took a step back with it this year, of course, or in this year, of course. And also for the back part, which just like all the other figures, so reverse studs on there. And also, of course, does have the uh, squishing feature. And like most of the figures of the previous year, you can go back and forth. So now that is about it with Sir Kentus. And now on to Karzon, which also quite cool one. At least some quite interesting pieces. And 
interesting pieces to him, obviously, and also a little bit silly. It's good to see another evil knight here that is in Vladek, well, he and also Dracus, which I'll go over next next throwback Thursday. So as for the light to it, as it does have the traditional uh, feet pieces, but in sand blue this time around. And as for these armor pieces, which do attach the same way as Kent Sir Kentis's, but instead of these, which like are kind of rock like and spiky and all that, which you can definitely use on some like scrawl mocks and bionicles if you wanted, but yeah. And also, uh, let me get this on. And as for the upper leg switch, as you can see, so, so leg pieces in both sand blue and black, which quite interesting. Good to see some difference to it. Whereas for these, uh, like upper armor pieces, or rather plating type pieces, which if you can see on camera, but it does have some like a, a grinding or or rather glittering kind of effect to it, which which was quite interesting for this time. Well, from the Vikings line, of course. And so now on to the body piece, which is quite dissimilar to most of the other ones, but which does have a metallic copperish type uh, painting to it, which is quite interesting, and also some like graveling type detail in there with four studs around. And as for the one arm of which, for the arms of which, just about the same as, or minus the armor plate, same as all the other figures, of course, but with the top part in black, of course, and also the lower part in sand blue. And as for this armor piece, Is a witch, which does have that same kind of marble effect to it, and also has a couple of spikes sticking out of it, which you could definitely use on some like Makuta type mocks and bi of Bionicle if you wanted, but yeah. And they do fit snugly on there. And as for his main weapon, which kind of similar to Sir Kentis's, but instead of being a mace, or rather a morning star, maybe this is a mace, but yeah. And of course does kind of form that and also he does has the hanging bits of it hung right onto it, which quite interesting, quite great how that is. And as for the other weapon in which which is of course a different kind of shield piece to it. And this which appears to be a snake that is in the copper coloring and also has some like wood detailing etched into it. Very cool. And of course four studs in the center. Of course, and attacked like all the other ones, of course. And onto the head. Well head and mask that is. Which as you can see, this this kind of one, very interesting. Still has the marble effect to it, and this one in particular was used on a couple of, of minifig sets, but one of which used as the head of a battering ram, kind of interesting. It also has the like bolting etched into it. And also from the side view, kind of covers up most of the head quite a bit, but the rest of which quite flat to that, and also has a pinhole or, or plus rod hole right there, of course. And flip up for that, and as you see, has his interesting face print with the like yellow skin tone and also with one faded white and one red eye since to signify evil on him of course. But the headpiece of which also in sand blue to match with the rest of the color scheme obviously. And for the back part of it, which is mostly also in sand blue and also a few studs there and just like it has one knob for a feature for the feature, just like 
all the year one figure or all the first year's figures all had. So you can do that and it flashes like that. And of course make the mate squirrel as well. Well it's a little different for that quite different of course. And for the articulation on both of these figures, just about standard for all the Knights Kingdom figures of course. To the final verdict. <coughs> okay, so for the final verdict is, I think these of which are quite cool figures for that time, for the time at least, have all new characters for the for the line, of course, and also good to see some weapons that aren't swords, of course, and of course being like a morning star and mace, obviously, and also. So, they, but also they do have some all new and interesting thing, uh, armor pieces to the, like the shoulders and the Jin armoring, of course. And of course, and how can you tell? And now how to tell Kentis from Raskas, of course, uh, which is he a dark green? Raskas was regular green, although the second version did have. Of him did have some dark green, but at least he would still different, obviously, and yeah. And of course, and also still kind of simplistic as all the figures of the line, of course. But also we do, and of course, but also same exact swing swishing features as the rest of the figures did, but yeah. And also cool different shields, obviously, and yeah. And so now, if y'all, if any of you still have these uh, sets from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of them. And for those of you who haven't and still have access to these sets, I say definitely pick them up. eBay, Bricklink, whatever. And that's it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.